So, let us try to define who is an entrepreneur. We speak so much about entrepreneurship, entrepreneur. So, let us try to simplify this uh, definition. A dictionary definition of entrepreneur is surprisingly bland and very blunt. It says that entrepreneur is a person who sets up a business to make money, which is not so great because everybody wants to do that. So, there is obviously quite uh, a different uh, twist on entrepreneurship as we understand in business. He an entrepreneur is certainly somebody who is uh, more than an employee and he is also more than a manager or a leader because in normal corporate uh, system you will find uh, several uh, employees, many managers and a few leaders. An entrepreneur may be acting in any of these roles, but certainly he is quite different from uh, these uh, roles. If you want to define an entrepreneur in a very simple manner, he is somebody who has nothing but an idea and a few chips in his uh, pocket and who is setting upon a course of developing something novel from this. He is creating business almost out of uh, nothing. So, that is the crux of entrepreneurship. Then you also say that there are thousands of managers who are uh, continuously creating new businesses like uh, you think of ITC. There were people who set up the Sunfeast brand of uh, business. The company set up its uh, paper and board making business. It was once upon a time a cigarette making uh, behemoth, but uh, today it is quite diversified. All that happened because managers and leaders in that company created new business verticals they developed. So, so the issue is with various groups that we have uh, in them several leaders who set up new businesses. Then what is so, so distinct about uh, entrepreneurs and for that let us take uh, one example. The example is very raw, very simple. An entrepreneur is somebody who is like a mountaineer. What does mountaineer do? He has a few kind of uh, implements and who has got the grit, he has that goal in mind and he goes on uh, climbing the mountain. He does not use any other uh, sophisticated technologies. He does not think if I have to, he will say that if I have to climb Everest, I must climb Everest. Maximum he will see the best season to uh, climb the mountain and then uh, leave the rest to his capability and to some extent to chance. On the other hand, a um, professional leader will do lot of uh, pathway mapping. He will see which are the best ways I can reach the place, to what extent I can hop in a helicopter, to what extent I can use a GPS, to what extent I should be equipped with telecommunication medium. That is he would equip himself far more and he will be bound by several rules as he embarks upon his journey. So, this is this difference between being an entrepreneur and being a professional uh, leader, which means that entrepreneur takes this and becomes creative in this process. So, let us look at three areas in which is first we talked about knowledge, skill, etcetera. We will call this generally competence. In for an entrepreneur, his core knowledge is extremely critical. If you are wanting to have a digital watch which does not require charging every day, the entrepreneur should have the core technical skill in making a battery which will last 7 days, 10 days, even a lifetime. So, if he has that core skill, he becomes an entrepreneur. But a professional is one who has generic knowledge. He generally understands what battery making is and how should we set up uh, battery plants and he could very well fit in a capital goods company, he can uh, fit in a railway traction company, he can fit in an automobile company and he can fit himself in a conventional battery making company. So, a professional has a generic knowledge which he will very delightfully apply to different industrial uh, systems across firms. Whereas, the entrepreneur has certain core technical skill much deeper than what a professional has and he is able to convert his core technical skill into the business. Then we talk about passion. The entrepreneur sets his own path, he does not follow anybody's path, he has his own logic and he will proceed on that whether others agree or not. I had uh, my entrepreneur friend who decided 20 years ago that we should be in a position to put our injectable products into the 
western world. So, many people said that this is too hazardous a risk, even established companies like Dr. Reddy's and Lupin have not ventured into that path so aggressively. As an entrepreneur, are you not taking a big risk? But he says that, he said that only when you take that risk and be ahead of others, you will be in a position to have the market for yourself and also fulfill a larger purpose of earning valuable foreign exchange to the country. So, that is the way the entrepreneur works. Whereas, the professional has a very clear strategic plan. He has got a strategic plan which is divided into various functional plans, product plan, manufacturing plan, commercial plan and he follows a system compliant approach in converting his passion into delivery. Then gumption or guts. An entrepreneur is driven by high rewards, he is not deterred by risks. He sees the mega valuations of the company and he sees the positioning in the entrepreneurial world. He wants to be recognized as a, one of the greatest uh, enterprise builders. So, he is kind of looking at those kinds of things. Whereas, a professional looks at moderate rewards, he wants to be praised as a good leader, he wants to be happy expanding the business of the core company. So, there are uh, the, in these three factors, you will see significant differences between how an entrepreneur functions and how a professional functions. But there are two aspects of an entrepreneur. An entrepreneur is an industrial pioneer. An entrepreneur is also an academic activist. So, we will talk about that. When uh, people like uh, Thomas Alva Edison and uh, Wright brothers or uh, Benz Daimler, when their founders had their technologies, they built those technologies into products and therefore, they created industries. Again, we spoke about uh, desk operating system which uh, um, will get started. So, industrial history has it that most new technologies are developed into practical uh, solutions and industries are built around that. S social media, search, these are all built around novel ideas where industries became new developments. Biologics, genetics, cyber uh, security, artificial intelligence, a whole number of uh, terms are coming up today from 1990s till date, which are progressing well into future with great promise. But why is it that big companies do not take those technologies into their own fold and start? There are two or three reasons. One, big companies have high overheads, they have got a bureaucratic way of functioning and thirdly, they are answerable to the shareholders. So, they do not want to do things which have uh, high risk, which have uncertain lead times, which cannot be justified through commercial means at this point of time. Though, but they also recognize that possibly there is lot of merit in going through that route. Therefore, they say that these are best done by entrepreneurial ventures and they would allow uh, <coughs> university researchers, they would allow uh, budding technologies come up with uh, those kinds of developments. Uh, like development of orphan drugs in the pharmaceutical industry. Orphan drug is something for which uh, there is no known uh, uh, pharmaceutical solution. And uh, normally, big pharma has uh, turnover in uh, billions of dollars. So, when uh, they want to do an orphan drug research, not every investor is pleased with that. They feel that it is really not adding to the core purpose. But at the same time, these pharmaceutical companies recognize that an orphan drug, once it is a <coughs> developed, it can provide a sizable profit margin, it can provide a lot of healthcare uh, benefits, it can position the company as a differentiated uh, company in the pharmaceutical space. Though they therefore, they are constantly on the lookout for entrepreneurs who are working in the orphan drug area and once those the drugs mature, they are uh, either acquiring those technologies or taking over those companies. Similarly, in R and D pure R and D like uh, ether energy, where uh, electric mobility was being thought of for the first time 3, 4 years ago. Companies said that let us see how ether energy develops its uh, electric two wheeler and uh, Hero has taken a stake in that because they would like to be connected with this uh, system of electric vehicle development, but felt at that point of time 3, 4 years ago that it was uh, too early uh, initiative 
for the company at that point of time when there was so much to be done in the IC engine uh, two wheeler segment. Therefore, uh, there are certain characteristics of lean structure, risk taking ability, agile development which can go very well with the entrepreneurial thrust and make uh, arcane developments, make uh, novel developments the right choice for entrepreneurial uh, forays. And as I said, once the technical feasibility and economic viability is established, companies are willing to take uh, those technologies or the firms themselves. In this manner, entrepreneurs constantly act as uh, you know industrial pioneers who keep expanding the boundaries of industries or creating uh, new er uh, areas. Today, in the medicine area, gene editing, genetics, personalized medicine, these are some of the hot areas for entrepreneurs to work on and there are at least uh, 30, 40 leading companies in the field, in the field of personalized medicine and big pharma companies are waiting because big pharma has got number of drugs which are being used for uh, cancer uh, treatment, but nobody is sure which drug works best in which person. These companies, these precision medicine companies are using genetic technology to make sure that this match is perfect and very efficient. So, people are waiting for these kind of companies to blossom and then they take a pick in those companies. And most times they get valued very handsomely for what they are doing. They get valued for the technology and the potential they offer in the hands of a bigger company than just for revenues or for uh, profits. So, that is the industrial pioneering which a company does. The other is economic activist. Compared to the standard established mature sector, an entrepreneurial sector offers much greater employment opportunity, much more uh, wealth creation opportunity because uh, you are in a position to plug your products and process into a number of niche areas which cannot be covered by big companies. And many companies have become mega enterprises in due course as I said in the very first uh, statement at the beginning of the course. Every enterprise we see today has been a small company, an entrepreneurial company when the company started its life. Therefore, the path to mega enterprise is through entrepreneurial uh, ventures. This characteristic of creating great economic wealth, creating uh, huge employment positions entrepreneurs in a class of their own. They are different from common citizens, they are different from professional managers, they are different from government administrators, they are different from industry leaders and even academic scholars. But I would like to also caution that this does not mean that entrepreneurs are super persons. They are human beings, they have got their uh, achievements, they got weaknesses which we will discuss in subsequent sections. But as far as entrepreneurship is concerned, as far as ability to transform an idea into a product or service, as far as the ability to create business out of uh, very meager resources, entrepreneurs are a class apart. Like for example, if I have to be a professional leader and want to do a new project, unless the resources are mapped out, that project will never be approved that project will never take off. Whereas, with an entrepreneur, he will say that as I develop the product, I will get the necessary resources. So, I need not wait, let me not lose time in this. So, quite uh, different in approach to both the uh, wealth creation and employment generation. And it is this recognition that is powering the western governments and western university systems to focus on uh, entrepreneurship in a very elaborate way. And in India, as we go forward, private investments and public policies must really look at encouraging entrepreneurships. There is a department for industrial promotion which is now registering all the startups. In the latest uh, ET startup awards function, the minister was saying that uh, already 50,000 uh, companies are registered as startups, and uh, potentially India is likely to have the largest number of startup registrations going forward, which is a very encouraging sign for economic development. So, we talked about uh, people uh, rewriting the industrial history. When we talk about Henry Ford, Ford Motor, Matsushita, Panasonic, Morita, Sony, you can see that individuals have rewritten the entire industries. So, that is the kick of entrepreneurship. 
Then there were entrepreneurs who expanded. Even though Ford created its automobile uh, history, William Durant, who was the head of uh, General Motors, created an equally capable uh, 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 automobile company. Similarly, Richard Branson with his Virgin, he created an equally capable uh, airliner. And in India, even when we were under British occupation, it was possible for Jamshed G. Tata, Lawson and Tobro, Dhirubhai Ambani after independence to create their ventures which fought with the shackles of either uh, uh, lack of independence or uh, regulatory regime to set up enterprises. So, people become icons because they create something novel, something which is very differentiated in the face of adversities. In this uh, grid, I have proposed uh, nine factors which are extremely important for an entrepreneur. Just to recall in this whole uh, session or in this whole module, we are trying to approach entrepreneurship as a personal capability and we are trying to focus on various aspects which define for us whether we have something that makes us an entrepreneur. So, there are different ways to look at it and we talked about uh, creativity, passion and then uh, ability to move ahead in against the issues that is one way of looking at it. Here it is a much more uh, purposeful and purposive way of looking at it. There are uh, three aspects, one is the delivery aspect that is this group of factors. Then there is an enabling aspect, this is this group of factors and then there is the sustainability. So, when we look at uh, three aspects of entrepreneurship, one is the delivery aspect, second is the enabling aspect and the third is the sustainability aspect, we look at a perfect entrepreneurship model. What is the delivery aspect? We discussed it sufficiently, one we should have purpose, two we should be creative, three we should have passion. Now, this serial numbering does not mean that they start in that order. You may have passion to become an entrepreneur, therefore you may discover a purpose, therefore you may discover a creative way of doing this or to start with you might be a very creative person understanding that your technology can be used for this product, then you could be very passionate about that, then you could uh, build a larger purpose over that. So, the question here is not what comes first, all the three are important, they, these three together make the delivery portion of the entrepreneur. Without these three, an entrepreneur cannot deliver. Now, the enabling portion, because an entrepreneur is his own marketing person, he is his own manufacturing person, he is his own uh, fundraising person. So, at the core, he should have self confidence or self worth as you may say, which is saying that whatever I am doing is something not only I believe in, what others must believe in because there is self worth in whatever I am doing. So, self confidence is extremely important. Secondly, self expression, an entrepreneur who keeps an ideas to himself or who is an introverted person is unlikely to be successful because the world needs to know, the world does not know the at the very basic of entrepreneurship is that you are doing something which nobody knows about it, nobody understands that this is the way of doing things. So, it is to up to you to demonstrate how this product or service can be useful. So, ability to express yourself in a very cogent, cohesive, thoughtful and effective manner is important. Then the third aspect is one of self promotion. Normally, when we talk about promotion, we think that it is a kind of narcissistic uh, journey that is uh, we are in love with ourselves. So, when in, a, in our normal corporate system, if somebody talks about himself or herself, people will say think that he is being boastful, but not so as far as entrepreneurship is concerned because there is nobody to promote you. The entrepreneur journey is one of uh, not being known, so you got to promote yourself, you got to promote your product, you got to tell how this product is superior, which means that you have to uh, demonstrate some established icons being moved away by your new product. So, you are able to be even iconoclastic in your way of doing things. When we talked about Nirma, he, there was a lot of promotion, 
as to how this product is much superior to the high priced detergents. Therefore, unless you are in a way unabashedly promoting your products, you cannot be an effective promoter. So, this is the second group of factors which is self confidence, belief in your uh, self worth which, which leads to the self confidence, then ability to express yourself very cogently, cohesively and the third one is uh, promoting your product yourself as an entrepreneur and your enterprise. Then the, thumb, the third one is sustainability. Sustainability is the most important aspect of entrepreneurship. While we talk about first time right, first to market, it does not mean that every time we are going to be successful as entrepreneurs. It is not that every time the market opportunity pans out as the way one uh, thinks about the technology pans out as one imagines it to be. So, there are definitely going to be failures those failures come in three areas. The first is rejection. When you say that I am an entrepreneur, I am coming up with this project and you go to the high, high net worth individuals or you go through the venture capital uh, investors, you are likely to get rejection too because they will say that uh, what is the big idea? If you say that I got a watch which will work like a digital watch, people will say that oh, no, 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 there are already watches for that, even Apple is there, they will come up with this, there is no point in you coming up with this kind of product. So, there is likely to be rejection. So, this kind of rejection should not make you a broody person, a kind of person who is withdrawn. You should be tolerant towards rejection, that is one of the first things. You should know that people are the first response of the other parties to an entrepreneurial venture used to say that probably this is not going to work. So, your ability to tolerate rejection and go ahead and press ahead with your thought process that is extremely important. The second is risk tolerance. If you think about your uh, project, however passionate you are, however uh, uh, you know committed you are as a uh, analyzing individual you know that there are risks involved and you also feel that certain risks are far beyond what you can manage, but you should have this tolerance for this kind of risks that is the second important aspect. And the third one failure tolerance, we should understand that the first product need not necessarily be the best product, there could be issues in that product therefore, your ability to manage this failure and go ahead that is very important. So, all these three sets of factors uh, feed into each other, they are actually one big bundle and uh, for example, if you have a failure unless you have the creativity to come up with an alternate solution and again have the purpose and passion supporting you, you will not be able to come out of that. So, these, these are all interlinked, but this nine factor grid is extremely important for you to assess yourself on this entrepreneurial mold. So, let us talk about this again a little more. When we talk about the creativity, we said that it is ideation, but focus always on new novel and innovative ideas into workable products or services. When we talk about passion, please do couple with course correction. Passion does not mean being dogmatic or dogged in whatever you are do doing without logic. Passion means also doing some kind of course correction as you go forward without giving up on the goal. When we talk about purpose, please look, look at an enduring logic. That logic should be sustainable for 5 years, 10 years, 15 years. So, it is larger than a business plan. These three together cause a technology which is disruptive, but helpful to the society. The second dimension, I already spoke about it which is the belief in oneself and ability to express yourself and promote yourself. And the third one I talked about taking the rejections in stride, this is integral to the entrepreneurial journey especially in the initial phases. This tolerance always is there because all novel technology is uncertain and then there is also the fight back from incumbents. The level of risk which you encounter in your entrepreneurial journey becomes heightened when other entrepreneurs also join the fray and everybody has got meeting rooms, everybody has got passionate founders. So, when you have that level of competition, the risk level obviously goes up. And the third one is the ability to reconstruct the project. When you have failures, how do you reconstruct my project? 
like for example, you said that uh, you will have a smart wearable which will uh, detect your uh, Parkinson's mechanism. That is you hold a pen, you will be able to detect how your uh, nervous system is uh, coping with that. So, you may develop a product thinking that everybody will hold the pen in a particular manner, but you fail to distinguish between let us say a left handed uh, Parkinson's uh, person and a right handed uh, user with Parkinson's. So, you could find a difference in this and the product may not succeed universally. So, how do I course correct this? How do I make the uh, product uh, more universal? These are the kinds of things which are uh, important in reconstruction and making this entrepreneurial journey sustainable. These are called unanticipated vicissitudes of entrepreneurial journey. <coughs> so, we talked very frequently about risks and rewards. What are those risks? So, I have actually done that from the highest risk to the lowest risk. The worst risk you can have in an entrepreneurial journey is bankruptcy, that is, you are completely broke you do not have a pie to support you and you have all the liabilities, you have no assets to back the liabilities, you are on the road. Then comes other kinds of risks which are smaller business failure, it could be product failure, it could be commercial unviability. So, as the risks go towards the right, you will find that those risks are manageable, but if you do not manage those risks well, like for example, you start with the shame and embarrassment of failure to personal and family distress, then esteem loss. These are all the small tangible and intangible risks. If you do not manage them well, then you might get into financial loss, you might get into business failure, finally bankruptcy. So, when you look at risks, you should never look at bankruptcy as the looming risk, that is the only risk. You should look at other risks also which could happen and then try to mitigate those risks. Once you manage the smaller risks, the bigger risks will automatically manage themselves. The other way also looking at rewards in a very way. The simplest reward is personal and uh, family prosperity. Then the other reward is excitement of success, the social status, industrial status you get, then the business profits you get, the licensing deals you get, how you are uh, looked at by big companies for acquisition and finally, the company valuations, these are all the risks. Now, this balance between risk and reward varies from entrepreneur to entrepreneur. Some entrepreneurs uh, take uh, the high risk reward route, some people take a balanced route. They also change based on the environment which obtains from time to time, but some people monetize at every opportunity and then move on. The way we monetize is to have let us say we talk about a pharmaceutical entrepreneur. He may decide to have uh, four types of products as I said earlier and monetize one product, use those resources to feed the other three products. Similarly, if you are a company which is specializing in uh, smart variables, you may have uh, sensor technologies, you may have battery technologies, you may have the entire assembled product, you may have uh, smart variables of different types using these three technologies. You may decide to license out your battery technology early on use those proceeds to develop the entire uh, portfolio of uh, your products. Therefore, you have different ways. Some people may say or think that uh, why should I leave out anything now, I will try to do as much as possible in and in this process take higher level of risk. So, it is up to the entrepreneur to take the kind of risk reward which you should do and that is where having a good uh, co-founder or having a board to mentor him or a strategic planner also would help.